Um, Keith Juicing up. I'm, uh, I'm outside now with uh, the one and only Robert Green. Um, and uh, just just uh, for the benefit of the viewers at home, just give us a bit of a recap of, of why you're here today. Yes, uh, well I've come here today primarily to support Roger Hayes actually, who's been, I think, is an extremely brave man who is a great example to everyone and is doing a great deal for the good of the country in my opinion. So I was pleased to come along and support him and uh, obviously some, very, uh, some other very interesting speakers including Phil McConnell from the USA who's gave a fascinating talk as well. Obviously I've had the opportunity today to talk a little more about the uh, the Holly Gregg case which is obviously the, the case that is uh, preeminent as far as I'm concerned and uh, I had the opportunity of just bringing people a little bit up to date into the, in this very complex case. Many people have followed through the internet and uh, there are all sorts of ways and means and I believe about a million references to it on the internet, I'm told now, that's what I'm told, I don't know about these things. Google Holly Gregg is the most simple one, isn't yeah, it? Very much so, very much so. Um, but there are lots of ways of finding things out about the, the Holly Gregg story. But obviously it was a good thing today in this, it gave me the opportunity to meet perhaps quite a few new people and perhaps bring people up to date. Very nice as well that Holly and Anne were able to come along because uh, obviously they're, uh, they're, they're so, there's so much interest in them and so much uh, love and support comes their way. It was actually lovely for them to be here and meet so many people and it really does make them very happy. It's, Holly loves all the, the people who are supporting after sort of being ignored and, uh, and vilified for many years and the same thing of course goes for Anne as well. It's, 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 it's a wonderful thing for both of the ladies to feel all this wonderful support. It really is a very good so I'm glad that they could come along today, it was great. Obviously we don't want a, a, a big talk, could you sum it up, like you say bring people up to date, what, what is the current state well, the of current, play? The current, the current situation is we're, we're, we're actually acting on many levels at the moment, uh, which take quite a long time in themselves. From my point of view, I've got three charges against me, one civil charge in Scotland, one civil, one injunction in England and one criminal charge in Scotland and I'm, I'm going for a, a preliminary hearing on the 13th of April in Stonehaven in Scotland uh, and then we'll see what happens from there on that. Here obviously there will be actions taking place against we, we believe are the perpetrators in Scotland, That's, those are the things that are all going through at the present time and we're collating evidence and putting things together with our legal team as we, and we will be taking action in England as well against Shropshire Council for their appalling conduct towards two ladies who've already suffered in the most awful mm. way and I can't begin to express my exasperation that people in Shropshire who've got nothing to do with the, the atrocities that took place in Scotland but actually go out of their way to persecute these two poor ladies the way that they did yeah. and, and using public money to do so. Uh, so this is something that I find very, very difficult to, 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 to understand. I really don't know why Shropshire Council felt the need to involve themselves in something that absolutely not something that was known all over the world. It was a major case. Why on earth would they want to involve themselves in trying to intimidate uh, two key witnesses? I really don't know. Yeah. Um, so uh, how's it going forward for yourself then? You've got this... Um... Yes, well the, 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 tr the hearing coming up on the, third, uh, the 13th of April is not one of uh, a major issue. It will just be to do with uh, the way the, the trial will take place when it does come about. It's scheduled at the uh, 6th of June at the moment, but I have to say it's unlikely because of the complexity of the trial, the number of witnesses who will need to be called and I intend to call uh, so some of the, the obviously the people who uh, the uh, crimes, uh, the, the allegations of those who've uh, been involved in the crimes, and also for the people like Elise Angelini, the current Lord Advocate of Scotland, who's leaving shortly. She's resigning uh, to actually have her on the witness stand as well for covering up the case. Uh, so all those things are going to come out when we get into open court. And I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. Right. And uh, is, is that one in England or Scotland? Did you that's say? in Scotland. That's, that's in Scotland. As most of the serious things, the serious issues take place in Scotland. As far as England is concerned, we're just concerned about this attack by Shropshire Council that mm. needs dealing with. And uh, you know, there are issues that have already been established uh, that they've broken the law over the, through the Freedom of Information Commissioner. Uh, the Commissioner found that they had already they've already broken the law, and that two members of Shropshire Council, two uh, senior managers of Shropshire Council, a man called Tim Collard and the other called Stephen Chandler, had in fact repeatedly lied over the council's involvement on the raid in Anne and Holly's home. 
two days ago I learned that uh, another complaint from a member of the public had been taken up and the Freedom of Inf Information Commissioner's Office are now conducting a second investigation into Shropshire Council about right. their conduct. The people concerned are all still in their jobs, still drawing their salaries from the public. Um, I don't know, if I was a, a resident in Shropshire and I found out about this, I think I'd be rather angry. Mm -hmm. but, but those are the things that are going on at the moment. And if people, um, you know, aren't already aware of uh, the, the case that you're dealing with, as in Holly Gregg, where, where can they go to find out information on that? Or well, what, what they can do, if, 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 if they're using the web, there's, there's lots of things to do, but perhaps I would just recommend, uh, if you don't know very much about the case and you want to know more about it, the probably easiest way is probably to look at one of the, my, my speeches, um, which if you type in Robert Green, Wake Up Call, mm. you'll get a, a, an hour speech in Edinburgh there where I cover some of the issues, not all the issues, but some of them. And there's also an interview that I conducted with a South African crew, and if you type in Robert Green, Freedom Central, you can look at that as well. So those will give you, a, it's rather than, eat better than reading a lot of documents. We have got lots of documents, but people find that a bit dry. It's sometimes easier just to see someone and watch them. And obviously you can make a judgment sometimes times easier by and more easily by just listening to somebody and seeing if they accept what you're saying you know and if people believe me that's good if they don't they don't but at least it's coming right from the horse's mouth if you like. Indeed. Um, the other way people can help uh, and we, we are getting making some progress here is by approaching their MPs uh, to take up this case and don't let them say to you oh it didn't happen in my constituency so I'm not interested already MPs are making uh, moves on this and in particular I'd like to praise Mr David Ruffley who's the MP for Bury St Edmunds. Nowhere near Scotland, nowhere near Shropshire, but he has uh, gone to the Scottish ministries uh, involved and asked them for, uh, to what on earth has gone on in this case uh, with Holly Gregg. The, the, the whole investigation has been conducted in a, a sort of way that is totally unacceptable and wants them for an answer. So great credit to Mr Ruffley and if he can do it, then other people can do it. I was just going to say, fair play to that man, but is, is, is he the only one at the moment? He's the only one who's done that at the moment. We, we have got a few other MPs, I will mention, who've given some help, uh, and they may give more in, the, in, in due course. I want to be fair to them. One is John Hemming, uh, MP, uh, who's the MP for Yardley in the Birmingham area. My own MP, David Moat, in, uh, who's the MP for Warrington. Uh, Warrington South. And, uh, Is that well, where you're based yourself? That's where I'm lived, yes. I'm from Manchester, so... Oh, we're... not far away then. No, we're neighbours. Yes. That's right. And the other person who's uh, shown some help as well, we're going to see him shortly, is uh, Annan Holly's own MP, Owen Patterson. Right. Uh, so we have those MPs we're going to be talking to, and uh, there will probably be others we hope will get on board. The more, the, the more this is taken seriously, the better. And uh, obviously, it's a terrible case. It needs to be, needs to come to the public domain. Mm -hmm. And I, I repeat, all that we're really asking about this terrible case, and all the cases related to it, because don't forget, there's also almost certainly a murder, and almost certainly a, 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 an assault uh, and an ab abduction of uh, Anne Gregg herself. What we really, all we're asking for is a public open inquiry into the Holly Gregg case and all the cases related to it. That's all we're asking for initially. That, that's, that, I don't think that's too much to ask for in the circumstances. Not at all. And, uh, you know, then we can start to get to the truth about this. We mm -hmm. don't want to convict anybody who doesn't have a fair trial. That's not our way. We don't approve of that. We don't approve of people taking the law into their own hands and violence. And we've got no time for all that. We just want it to go through a proper process. But the authorities must cooperate with us in trying, in, instead of trying to obstruct it, which they have done up to now and certainly have done for the last 11 years, in fact. Is that how long you've that, been working on well, it? Well, I've been working on it for about two years, but when the, the case was Am first... I right? Sorry to interrupt. Am I right in thinking you you were a, an investigative journalist? Is yes, that right? well, I still and, am, yes. That's, but that's, but that's how you kind of came... That's, you know, I was came. invited to ask to try and help with the case by yeah. a, a very loyal person in Scotland who was appalled at what was happening in his own country and asked me if I could help. Um, one of the reasons that people sometimes say, well, why isn't it somebody in Scotland dealing with a Scottish case? There is an answer to that because I'm afraid that, as is self-evident, the level of corruption is so high at the highest level in Scotland that somebody acting in Scotland like me would have had a knock on their door within a week from the police mm. and been held, held for harassment or any, any trumped up charge you could possibly imagine. It had to be someone outside Scotland is why I was invited to, to, to take on the case in the first place. But I just, just to remind everybody that when the, the allegations first came out in May, uh, May 2000, 
So now we're talking 11 years since uh, since the crimes were reported mm -hmm. and nothing has happened. Despite the fact that the Scottish Government have accepted that Holly has, has been a victim of crime by give, paying her a compensation out of public funds of £13,500. Now when we have people like the Solicitor, Ge the, um, Solicitor General in Scotland, uh, Mr Mulholland, Frank Mulholland, blatantly telling people there isn't enough evidence, it's not credible, the rest of it, that's rubbish because the, 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 the state of Scotland has already accepted that mm. Holly is a victim and the, uh, the documents that were provided also named, uh, certainly named two of the abusers categorically and also referred to probably others who had access to Holly. So, you know, it's really in the hands, if we can get some decent people, in, in elected members of Parliament, elected members in Scotland, and some decent people in the police, social services, who feel as badly about this as millions of people throughout the world do, then we can start to make some progress. Absolutely. It's a good note to finish on, would you say? Thank you, Keith. I hope so anyway. We were very optimistic anyway, and we will be doing our very best, that's for sure. I'd like to just say uh, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. And I'd also like to say I think you're uh, a living legend. Oh, <laughs> not really. Genuinely, <laughs> you know, um, talk about put your head on the parapet or however you want to, you know, term it. You've been arrested several times yourself, haven't you? And yes, I have. Taken yes. in and, and what yes, have you harassed yes, have. And, yes. and all the rest of it. I think uh, the work you do is tremendous and it inspires people like me to come to things like this and, you know. Thank you, Keith. That's very um, kind of you. It's a pleasure but to meet you, ladies, These two ladies are lovely ladies. They, they, they are worth they fighting are. for. They really indeed are. Indeed they are. Thank um, you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure.